friends. Today I'm playing with, I did a short the other day of a um, chrysanthemum or my version of one. And I used some purples. I kind of stayed in, you know, the same uh, colors as far as I used blue and I used a purple and I kind of blended them together. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. But you asked for a slower version of it. So I'm happy to do that. I'm using, I've been out of my Artisto pad, so I've been using, which I love this. Uh, these are fabulous, the Meaden cold press paper. Um, it's 140 pound, 300 GSM, and it's acid free. These are the 10 by sevens. Um, but what's nice about this is I know a lot of you asked for the 100% cotton. This is 100% cotton, and it's just a little bit more than those Artisto pads, which you know I love. If you're a beginner, you can get a pack of them for like $22 in the US. Um, but meet and keep in mind, uh, will ship all over the, um, you know, everywhere, all over the world. So I will put the link in my description below. And I think they have a 10% off right now. You can always use Debbie 10. Um, I don't get money from that, <laughs> but um, that'll give you 10% off. And it's really a fabulous paper. It's got really nice texture. Um, they come on a block, which for me is good because I do paint quite wet. For beginners, I always suggest you paint more damp, not so wet. Um, but either way, this paper will uh, stay nice and flat for you when it dries. So that's what I'm using today. I'm also using, as you know, my favorite favorite. And if you don't need to see these supplies, just fast forward. Won't hurt my feelings. Um, my Lang Palette, sister company of Paul Rubens, which you know I'm a huge fan of them. You can see how much I use this. This is my daily go-to um, palette because I paint so much. And it's just really convenient. It's a great size. I can travel with it. It's gorgeously vibrant, you guys, their paint. But yet if I put enough water, like 80% water, 20% pigment, it's really transparent and luminous. So I love it. It's got all the colors you could possibly need from your warm oranges and reds and beautiful pinks, you guys. You see me use a lot. Um, some beautiful violets and greens. And then, of course, your neutrals. So great palette for under $20. Um, I might throw in maybe a few metallics. I don't know. I've got the Paul Rubens sitting here on my desk. Um, so might use those. What I'm going to start with, and by the way, I've got my little uh, meat in a water well, one to rinse, one, one to wash, and one to rinse. I love these because if you've dumped over a water container or two, there's no way you could dump this over. And it's just kind of pretty. It's nice and real white ceramic, heavy duty, clean. I've got a paper towel here for my dabbing. I'm a constant dabber with my brush. Um, and I've just got my little, I think this is meat and two actually, my little uh, palette here. I travel with this one a lot, but it had purple in it and that's the color I'm using. So I grabbed that. Um, let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and you can find all my supplies, by the way. I even have set up an Amazon shop for you. Um, that has all my supplies in there. And I've done that for a number of different countries. It took me forever, but um, I hope that's helpful for you. But definitely look in my link below. Um, so I'm gonna use the Meaden, this light blue, and you know what, actually, one second, guys. Um... I think I might run out of room on this palette because I want a light blue in there and I don't have room. So let's just put it on here. Look at that beautiful light sky blue, I think is the actual name for it in the My Lang palette. By the way, these are my brushes. So excited, you guys. Remember we designed the packaging for them? Look at that hot pink fun color. Um, like these just make me happy to use them and I like to be happy when I paint. I like bright colors. Um, these are coming out in September. I'll put the link below too if you just want them to send you an email. Um, it will be a very limited release. Um, so I've got my light blue there and then I'm going to mix that with a violet. Let's see. Let's do the... 
This is the regular violet here. I think it's called Deep Purple. So I'm gonna put a little of that on my palette. I've actually got it in there too already. So maybe I'll just use both of these. This is just China, by the way. I uh, my my grandmother recently, I'm not my grandmother, my aunt passed away recently, and I found this in the garage. I'm sure it came with a little cup, but I love using old vintage china uh, to paint on. Okay, so I've got those are really the two main colors I'm going to be using. I might add in just because I love this color this kind of red violet. It's really pretty, you guys. Look at that. Isn't that yummy? So I might throw in a, just a touch of that. We'll see. Let's actually, what I think I'll do first is use my handy dandy. I'm having so much fun with these, you guys. Something you guys told me about. These little rubbery uh, stamps. And this one's perfect for swatching out. And then you guys told me about this piece. So let's just do that real quick and we'll swatch out our colors. Let me grab my stamp pad. And I just use the Ranger stamp pad because it's waterproof, it's um, nice and big. I'll look for my link, I've had it for quite a while. But let's just put this at the bottom here and then I'll swatch out my colors. There we go. Okay, so. We're going to be using that red violet. Let's just get that in a swatch here. There we go. Oh, isn't that like the most gorgeous color? If I could get away with it, I'd probably have that in my house. Can you imagine? People would walk in and probably be horrified. But it's so pretty. And then what I'm doing there is I just add some water because I want to see how dark it can get and how light it can get. So this is about 80% pigment, 20% water. And by the time I come over here, I've just added water to my brush, tapped it off and spread it. This is probably 20% pigment, 80% water. And then let's do that fun purple. So this is... Um, what you would call an analogous palette because all these colors are together on the color wheel. Add in a little bit more water with just a damp brush. I'm not using a big flood of water. So see how they're all together? That's a very harmonious and comfortable, smooth um, palette, which I kind of gravitate towards. We will be adding green in which is opposite that red violet. So that's gonna be kind of our pop. But uh, for the most part, we'll be using these nice blues. Let's add in some blue here. That's that light sky blue, which I love. Wash, rinse my brush, tap it off, and then just pull out that color, wash, rinse again. And that just, you know, in my paintings, I always try to use all the different values of the color because it's just so much more interesting. So clean my brush and let's get our green out. I tend to gravitate towards um, a mix of sap green or tree green and I mix with it um, some olive green. So that just kind of tends to be the color I use. So you have that really kind of earthy, warm green, but yet you can see the sap green in it. It's really, for me, it's definitely my go-to green. You may have yours as well. And I think that's gonna be my palette, guys. That's what I'm gonna use. So isn't this fun? I love those little swatches. All right, so let's do this. Um, what I'm going to do, sorry, just looking in my camera here to make sure my paper is in the uh, screen, you know, me and my tech skills. And this is what I'm going to be doing. So this is that Filbert brush I'll be um, sharing in September. You get a whole set, by the way, of five brushes. 
and they're going to be about $55, but they will be a really limited release, you guys. I'll just tell you that. I just don't want anybody getting upset because they didn't get their brushes. So it will be a small release in September, but you get five brushes. This will be pink. Um, they didn't send me my new brush yet. And Filbert is one of them. I love the Filbert because it's so versatile, and I love a versatile brush that I can just use for everything. So... I'm going to be using the side of my brush, kind of holding, resting my um, wrist on my paper because I don't have a steady enough hand to float. I always hold my brush right about the crimping. It just feels comfortable and I feel like I have a little bit more control. And then I'm going to use not only my brush like sideways like that to get those thin lines and I'm going in these little C curves just back and forth nice and lightly it, it literally reminds me of like just dancing on my page back and forth back and forth I took um, ballroom dancing and I don't know why that reminds me of that um, so anyways I'm gonna do that tip number two that I'm going to do here is I'm going to start with my lightest value um, meaning probably the 80% water 20% pigment because I want to build the layers you can always go darker can't really go lighter um, because watercolors are so transparent to go lighter you could maybe lift and that would be about it so let's mix up a tiny bit of that purple but I want water in there so see that I've got quite a bit of water and I always have little test sheets laying around that if you're not sure what color you have just created you can take a little test sheet and that's the that's the value I want that is that light value so that's what I want to start with and as that dries I can build darker and darker layers okay so let's start with that. And I'm just gonna start right here and using the edge of my brush and going back and forth in a sweeping C curve. So let's go ahead and start. Just touching my page, letting it float. Now this is just my version of um, chrysanthemum uh, you can have yours and I'm making sure all the tips go back to the center here and then I might just tap in with a little bit darker so maybe touching in right to the center look at that that is the magic of watercolors right there you guys and then I'm gonna let that dry because I and move on to my next flower because I want to put another layer on there. So isn't that gorgeous? Don't you just love that? I could have done that with the blue too. All right, so let's pick up and do that again. Maybe right here, I'm gonna go in a triangle composition. So if you were to, you know, this is a very popular um, composition pattern is just like this. So I'm basically putting my main elements here and then I'll have my stems there. So that's just an easy composition. Um, let's see, let's go right here. And again, using the side of my brush. Now the more pressure and the more I tilt it sideways, the thicker stroke I'm going to get. So I'm adding in both thin ones, thick ones, making sure all the tips are coming back and then I'll go in with that. You know what, let's go in with the blue actually. And look how, I just love these two colors. They're part of the same color family, so it makes sense. <gasps> look how pretty, isn't that pretty? Maybe just a tiny bit of that purple I might tap in. Oh my gosh, you guys. Seriously, I, you know, have painted with watercolors my entire lifetime. And it's just, that's how you know your passion, you guys. Like, 
every morning I wake up and I just can't wait to paint. I can't, like I never get tired of these effects and what watercolors do. So this one is gonna kind of go out that way, that one that way, this one I'll put a little bit that way, really common um, uh, composition. Just going back and forth, touching in. And you know, there might even be some wonky uh, pieces coming out here and there. So you can certainly add those in, or maybe some little ones. There we go. Add a little bit more water to that purple, but I want it to be quite light. And if you feel you have too much water, just tap, tap, tap. There we go. And I really would have preferred to do the stems first so they kind of blend in, but look at these beautiful colors, you guys. <gasps> I just love it. So fun. By the way, I have a new watercolor class I made for you guys. Um, it's only $45. I really wanted to make it affordable and um, something that was fun that you could get in there and play. I have worksheets. It's so much fun, you guys. So I hope you'll check that out. I'll put that in the description here too. I had a good time. I hope to do more because it was certainly a learning experience for me, for sure. Okay, now I'm gonna use my brush this way and add in some of that green before it dries too much. So I'm gonna pick that up. It's about 50-50, 50 paint, 50 pigment as far as the saturation and color. If you have too much on your brush, just tap it off. And then let's go in here and draw some stems. So this brush is so fun because you really can get thick lines. The more pressure I have, I can get thicker lines. And that's what I wanted. I wanted it to kind of blend in here and kind of move around. So we've got our first layer here, which is mainly a light to medium wash. Now let's go in, wash and rinse my brush, tap it off, make sure all that paint is off. And now let's go in, as long as this is dry, and start adding in some of those fun colors. Let's see what this uh, red violet does. Ooh, isn't that pretty? So I'm gonna lighten that up just a tiny bit. I wanna be about in the mid value range. So yeah, that's mid value. So I've got my light first glaze and now I go to my mid value. And let's just go in and start creating using the side of my brush. Now, I really would prefer this be a little drier, but that's okay. Bringing all the ends of my brush strokes to the middle. So they're all going to the center of the flower. And now this one dried a little bit more, but look how pretty that creates such depth when we go in over the first glaze with some darker. It just really creates this depth. Your lighter colors are going to push more to the background. Your more uh, intense, more value colors which is gonna be more 80% pigment, 20% water, are gonna pop out in front and it gives you this beautiful depth in your paintings. That's always one of the first things that I notice in beginners is they haven't quite grasped that yet. And it's such an easy little technique to really give your flowers, you know, take them from being, or any paintings from being real flat now I wanna go in and add in that blue. So let's do that. And I actually don't mind that. <gasps> Look 
how pretty these two are. I did a, um, look at that, I'm just really going back and forth like that. Um, a Lotus a while, quite a while back, about a year ago, and I used these colors together and I thought they were so pretty. together but I love the analogous palette <gasps> look how wonderful and then I think what I'll do is add in um, some purple so again if you have pick up too much just tap it off one two three there we go I don't want to completely cover up those um, light values in the back. I want to make sure I kind of save those. And then let's go in with some purple. And now we're going to really add some depth, right? Look. Oh my gosh, you guys. So this is a deeper color too. I'm just picking up a tiny bit of water on my brush. And then that purple, but oh my gosh, look how pretty. It just draws your eye in there with those different values. I seriously, I'm not kidding you guys. I wake up in the middle of the night and want to paint because I love this so much. I love those effects and I think of, oh my gosh, how could I do this? How could I create that? Okay, so wash and rinse my brush. By the way, don't forget, I have a lot of free resources on my website. If you go to debbiewalkerart.com um, and just go to free resources, and every month I put lots of free drawings in there for you guys. So I hope, hope you guys are finding those. Okay, let's go for those leaves now. So using, see, this is what's so great. I can use this brush for both the petals and the thin stems. I love that. I love being able to use one brush. So I'm using the edge here and going to, you know, you could almost use um, my angle brush too. And then I'm just tapping in a little darker value. So I just picked up some of that just for interest and look at that just to touch around and then leave it alone and let it spread so back into my green let's do maybe a little leaf here as always i kind of make up my leaves you guys so i know every once in a while somebody will say that's not the right leaf for that flower you know, we're creating here, guys. That's what it's all about. It's about fun. By the way, that's totally how I teach my online course and my tutorials. Like, I just like to have fun. I was a serious painter for a long time, doing com you know commissions and things, and it was fun. I met a lot of fun people, but um, now it's so nice just to kind of do my thing and and I can paint however I want. I love it. Now, I just picked up some of um, the olive green, just loaded my brush, and I'm tapping off. And then I'm going to go in here and just create some interest. Kind of towards the center. And the trick is here, like, leave it alone. Like, put it in there and then leave it alone. Because what I will tend to do is just overwork, overwork. I want to blend it. And then the last thing I want to do here is really create a light wash of that green. So, and again, I can grab my little swatch here and see, I want to get over here in that, like 80% water, 20% paint. So that's pretty good. And what I want to do with that is create some leaves in the background here like that because now look at that it immediately pulled it into the background and that's so important 
for creating interest and some depth. So I'm just using the edge of my brush and look at that. Look at that thin line I can get. Isn't that great? So I'm trying to use all my different values and then maybe tapping in a little bit there, letting that blend. Look at how beautifully it blends if we just leave it alone and let the watercolors do their thing. Now that one dried a bit, so I might have to blend that just by adding a little bit of water. So there you go. I'm pretty much done with this. Um, I might want to, you know, I should have Googled what a chrysanthemum um, bud look like because it would be fun to add in a little bud here. I bet it's nice and tight. Let's just go for it. So I'll pick up that very light wash of that purple and then let's add one in right here. And you know, I'm kind of ad-libbing here, guys. Let's just add that little, and now watch the really nice thin line I can get by using the tip of my brush and light pressure. There we go. And we've got a little bud. It kind of creates a little bit of interest. All right, well, I'm about done. You could always go in here and add more things, of course. Like, I almost feel like I wanna add a little leaf right here. Just kind of showing in the back. But you know, keeping it simple. Yeah, I like that. So there you go. I hope this was helpful. Um, have fun most of all, you know, play with the colors that really inspire you. And um, I will see you soon. Thanks so much for being a part of my little community, hanging in here with me. Um, you know, for the last year, um, I've really learned and I'm trying to create all different content for you guys. So, you know, my online course, which is only $45, um, for those of you that you know, want to do it at your own leisure, you want worksheets, you want um, something you can just watch whenever you want. So I did that. I continue with my free tutorials here for you guys. I try to do as many free drawings. So I'm really trying to listen to you guys and see um, what kind of things you enjoy. And you know, everybody's different. So some people like the Zoom classes, some people like doing their own thing. But most of all, just have fun, play. No rules here, you guys. All right, there you go. I hope you guys give that a try. Um, you know, use any Filbert brush that you have. These will be out to my set in September, but use any, um, I love the Princeton um, 8 Filbert brush and their select series is really inexpensive um, and that would work just fine. All right, I will see you soon, everybody. Thanks so much.